Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the cavern. My name is Amanda, and I am here today with rain swept. It is so cold out, so dreary. Uh, there was another snowstorm today in Toronto. I am very busy with tax season and my day job, so I thought I need a game break. So I, I figured I would um, try out. Uh, I, I got. I got swept into the, the Steam sales again, and I only bought one game, but uh, it seemed interesting. I've been in the mood for a new mystery. I always browse the mystery tag on Steam, and this one seemed interesting, and it was only 13 bucks. So this is a new one. It only came out uh, this month, I think, so I know very little about it. I've heard it has a very Twin Peaks vibe to it, so I'm, I'm ex super excited to try it out. So let's do this. So we're gonna go to new game. Oh, here we go. Monday, twelve fourteen a.m. October seventh, nineteen ninety six. All right. Okay. Uh oh. Well, that was interesting. Okay. <laughs> A dark beginning, but most mysteries do have those. Ooh, I like this. This, uh... This is already kind of feeling twins, Twin Peaks as maybe minus the soundtrack. I can feel that Pacific Northwest coming in. Excuse me, one second. I'm just going to make sure this is actually recording properly. Okay. Perfect. Nice. Rain swept. That looks like a hardened detective right there. I have got my... Well, this is my dealing with taxes scotch, but it's also my hard and grizzled detective scotch. October 7th, 1996. God damn, it's coming, it's really coming down, yep. It always does. Here we go. Hope I don't catch a cold again. Okay, so press E. Enter or left mouse button to interact with objects. Okay, we'll try the left mouse button here. Then use the arrow keys. I'm also just going to quickly check to make sure that this is... Okay, great. So we have a full screen there. That's nice. Then use the arrow keys or the mouse to select further options. Okay. Alright, what do we got? Spaces to skip dialogue. Toggle smoking? That's interesting. Okay. Left control. Um... Inventory is the up arrow, or I just... There seems to be many ways to do things. Okay. So you got your WASD. That's fine. I can I can deal with that. Shift is to run. Or the right mouse. Uh, interact is E or enter or left mouse. Look at... Okay. Okay. I got it. Okay. I think I got this. I got this. Yes. So we got a search icon here. And I will look at it. That's my car. Yes, it is. Great. Okay. Um, use. I just got here. I'm not going back now. All right. Nice. So I can... Ah, oh, there I go! Moving along. Oh, and that's run. That's nice. Always have a run option, everybody. This adventure game is already winning, in my opinion. Uh, what's that? So as I pass by things, it looks like they're... Ah. They've been here a while, it looks like. Alright. And... Terrible. Someone's... What'd you say? I can't hear over... Okay, so they're trying to talk to each other. Can I interact with you, buddy? Only a matter of time. You know that. So I might as well take a 
look at the house. Right? There's an open window. That's a clue. Oh, it is a clue. I even wrote it down. Note added. How do I get to my notes? Okay. Uh, how about you, buddy? Ma'am, please, you need to back away a little. What happened here? A murder. A murder! Johnny, get under the umbrella! Oh, dear. Cranny, I want to leave. It's really cold. Can we go back to the shop now? You can all see this coming a mile away. Oh, boy. Ma'am, please. Granny, please! Sorry for my, uh... Foam going nuts. Here we go. Alright, Johnny, let's go. There's no point in standing here now. Alright. Bye, Granny. Oh, we should have done something. Who's that? There's nothing we could have done. Ooh. Chris did this, I'm sure of it. Aha, Chris. We're just sitting here, smoking away, listening to all the conversation. Ah, <sighs> does look like it, doesn't it? Who's that? Who are all of you? Detective Stone, right? The chief is inside. They've been waiting for you. All right. I... Well, we use the mouse or number keys to select dialogue options. You need to control the crowd, officer. Yeah. You need to push the crowd away from the scene, officer. What? <laughs> what? You'll have to speak up. I can't hear you over the rain. The crowd. Handle them. There could be evidence out over the out here. We can't have the crowd trampling all over the evidence. You know it is hard to hear over all this rain. Oh, yes, I'm trying. Hey Williams, what the hell are you doing? Trying to prop up the tape, sir. It won't stay. We'll get some sticks and drive them in. Yes, sir. Richard. Don't, don't, don't call for Richard. Richard's on leave. Do it yourself. Goodness. Sorry, detective. Thing is, we're short of manpower here. Yeah, you think? We were prepared for this kind of a thing. First time in decades. And to top it off, this goddamn rain. Yeah, seriously. It's like you live in the Pacific Northwest or something. Like, oh wait, I think you do. Just get crowd con just get the crowd under control. I'm heading inside. Yes, detective, don't worry. Richard! I mean, Williams! Right. Right. So, I think... Where can we explore here? Okay, that's as far as we can go that way. So this way is the crowd. The crowd is too close to the crime scene. The number of cops are few. This is poor. Yeah. Uh, that's the way inside. I wonder why Chief sent me all the way to Pineview for this case. Hello, Irock. Only one way to find out. We are playing a Twin Peaks-esque, um, at least that's how I've been seeing it uh, compared in the reviews kind of game. So let's see. Should I go in? Ah, uh, look around some more just in case I missed anything. Let's see here. Yeah. Okay. I don't think I, I think I'm ready to go in. Let's go in. Should I go in? Yeah, let's go in. No point in hanging around here. So I'm just gonna do one thing. Oh god. Oh wow. Wow. That's the sheriff. I should talk to him first. So I am just going to turn down the sound volume a bit. Because it's drilling into my ears. Okay. And back. Man, this artwork. Let's resume. Yeah, this is a... Ah. I'm still
still hearing the same thing. Sorry. Um, it's really loud. Maybe I'll just turn down my volume. How about that? Let's see. Okay, that's better for me. Now I can hear myself. Looks like my 11-year-old nephew did it. Ah, yeah. I, uh... It's an indie game, for sure. I didn't pay big bucks for it. I'm pretty much getting the artwork I paid for. But still better than anything I could ever do, so... Okay, so we have... Alright, so what do we got? We got clues. We've got a glass of wine and a spilled glass of wine. So I guess I should go talk to the sheriff. Hello? Huh? Whoa, 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 whoa! What? What? Oh no! Detective, are you okay? I, I, I don't know. I really don't. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Guess I'm just a little tired after the long drive here. Uh, okay. You say so. Detective Stone, right? Head office called in to say that you'd be joining us here for this investigation. I'm Sheriff Harris, and this is Officer Watts. I'm not putting any effort into voices tonight just because I'm, I'm tired. I won't be playing long. But I will try to emote a little more. We appreciate the department sending help, but I don't think we'll need it. <laughs> this case is ready to be wrapped up. Yeah, sure. Sure? What do we have here? The victims here are Christopher Green, age 26, died from a bullet wound to the head. Looks well, self-inflicted, so this is the guy we saw at the beginning. And, oh! Oh, hello, other corpse! I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. And Diane Miller, age 24, single bullet wound through the abdomen. The victims lived together, were unmarried. Aha! Huh. Alright, our clues. Any sign of an intruder? Any signs of an intruder? No signs of forced entry. The door was locked from the inside when we arrived. Okay. An officer climbed through the open window here to open the door. There are no footprints outside the world. Outside that window. <laughs> it's not ready to be wrapped up. It's never ready to be wrapped up. Yeah, seriously. Oh, I'm stretching out my legs. Except the officers. He was careful. No signs of struggle or marks on the bodies either. I'm being I'm being a smart ass. I'm a I'm a big city I'm a big city detective coming into a small town. I'm gonna I'm gonna be very judgmental about these small town procedures. That's how it works. Time of, what was the time of death? According to the next door neighbors, a single gunshot was heard around, oh, 15 hours, so about midnight, just after midnight. We received the call at about, oh, 20 hours, and we were here in another five minutes, okay? We found them dead upon arrival and confirmed the timing. Okay. The weapon. What do we know about the weapon? It's a gun. Both shots were fired from a 38 caliber special revolver. That gun. That one right there. That is a good response time. Holy crap. Maybe it's a really small town. There's not a lot of driving going on. The ballistics report will let us know more. Uh, any witnesses? Just the next door neighbor who claims to have heard a single gunshot. We can interview him shortly. Oh. Right, let's send the questions. Honestly speaking, Detective, we think it's pretty obvious what's taking place here. What do you mean? They ha had a reputation. They weren't exactly a happy couple. The whole town knows this. Diane was shot at point blank range with Chris's gun. Probably by Chris. He then went ahead and shot himself as the wound is clearly self-inflicted. So you see, sending you here unnecessarily complicates things. So this is interesting. I can kind of... I'm gonna remain silent on this. 
It's obviously a case of murder-suicide detective. To be fair, it kind of looks like that to me, too. Check the hand for powder burns. It's always the way. So everything's figured out already? If that was sarcasm, I'll ignore it. But yes, more or less. Uh, are you suggesting there was domestic violence involved? It seems so, it was never reported, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen! That's, that's, that is true, that is true, fair enough. So, rumors. You may call it that, but, uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. I'm, I'm not sure that our, and they were never really able to fit into this town. Oh, they are prejudiced. Prejudiced! They were new here, moved in about six months ago. Oh. Never got out much, didn't make any friends. We don't need to analyze the obvious detective. That would only be inefficient. <laughs> Why should we analyze the evidence? This is Officer Blunt. <laughs> That's the best name ever. If she is not Blunt, I will be very upset. Um, she will assist you through the course of your work. She was super eager. She just ran in here. Hello, detective. And, uh, one more thing. We're, we're, we're looking to wrap this case up quickly and cleanly. We don't want to drag it if it can't be helped. We have an important festival coming about around in a week's time. Of course you do. Of course. You might say this is... Uh, rather bad timing. Is there a good timing for a murder? I don't know. So, there's no need to go around complicating things, alright? Just get me a story that works and we can close the case quickly. Wow, this, this guy's suspicious. Sarcastic reply. Oh, come on. I got to go with the sarcastic reply. Yeah, sure. Can't wait to wrap this case up. Uh, yeah. Alright then, I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Alright. Wow, he's running away. <clears throat> anyway. Have a look around the room if you'd like. Come talk to me when you're done. Alright. So I guess I should talk to, uh, Ms. Blunt here. Alright, so... Ooh, I like this music. I am... You know what? I am on the uh, nostalgia train for the synth music of the 80s and 90s. Okay, so let's see here. Let's look at this. What is it? I don't... Chris. 96. It's signed Chris 96. Okay. I'm guessing Chris built some furniture around this house. He's a carpenter. Okay. Can we talk to her? Hey, buddy. She she doesn't say a lot. Uh, let's see. Thirty-eight caliber specialist, Officer Watts said. Looks pretty old. He can hold six rounds. It's a revolver, so it wouldn't have ejected the shell casings. They should still be in the barrel. Okay. Let's open the barrel. There are three unused rounds still here and three spent shell casings. So that's that's three shots. So that's that is one shot unaccounted for. Interesting. If two were fired last night, where's the third? Exactly. Or was it shot last night or on some other day? The gun belonged to Chris, according to Officer Watts. Let's assume Chris or Diane weren't the ones to use it. Is there anyone else that could have known where they kept the gun? From Pineview? I really doubt it. Remember, no signs of force entry. Could be someone they were comfortable with or trusted? Good conclusion. No one I could think of. Okay, let's take a look at the body. Let's use the body. 38 special rounds. It's a box. Oh, I was looking at something else. It's a box of 50 rounds. There are 44 here, which means six are missing. 
Two were used last night. Well, three were used last night. There were three still loading the gun, as we saw earlier. If two were shot last night, there's still one unaccounted for, so we already know that. Was that shot last night, too, or on some other day? Interesting. Okay. I want to look at the spilled wine. Yeah. Red wine. It looks like a new bottle was opened yesterday. No one drank from this glass. It seemed that Chris was sitting by himself at the table drinking wine, waiting for someone to join him. Probably Diane? Whether he was waiting for her or someone else, we don't know yet. A glass of wine was knocked over. This looks like wine, but there seems to be some blood here as well. How did blood spatter in this direction? It doesn't make sense. These drops of blood feel out of place too. Huh. Officer Blood, I think there's more than two gunshots that we're seeing here. I look at the gun? Is this just the gun again? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, we, we did all that. Okay. Alright! Let's look at this body. Gunshot to the stomach. The damage in the residue would suggest that the shot was taken at point blank range, which was explained to us. That rules out the possibility of, it, of her being shot from the open window. She would have been in the line of sight from outside, though. There's no mistaking it. The perpetrator would have to be inside the house to cause this kind of a wound. Okay? Whether that was Chris or someone else, it's hard to say at the moment. Hmm. How about you? Let's talk to the... I should look around a bit more before moving it on from here. Uh, what else can I look at here? Is that all I can do? Uh... Can I go through the door? Nope. Uh... Can I talk to this guy? Nope. Not that guy either. Oh, what's that? I saw it. There we go. Oh no, I already saw that. Okay. Uh. Tipped over chair. What am I missing exactly? Talk? I should look around a bit more before moving on. Okay. Um, how do I get my... Okay. Aha! We have a journal. Cool. Victim had a reputation in this town. Local cop seems pretty convinced it's a case of domestic violence. I shouldn't expect them to be very helpful. Open window. Entry points. Okay. That's all we got. <sighs> okay. Let's see. Uh, the problem is I've, I've looked at everything. Did I look at him? I don't think I did. Did I? Bullet wound to the head. The skull is badly damaged. Most of the side has been blown off. Oh yeah, let's examine his hand. Mm, Gunpowder residue on his right hand. So there you go, Irock. There is gunpowder residue on his hand. Hard to disagree with Officer Watts here. This is strong evidence for the victim shooting himself. Also, it was made to look that way. Dun, dun, dun! The chair's fallen on its back. Looks like Chris fell off the chair before or after being shot. I think that's everything. Alright, great. Let's go over to the sheriff. Have a talk with him. Don't know about our partner yet. You done here? Yes. Yes, I'm done. Alright, let's have a chat with Mr. Willis. Rain has finally let up. Oh yeah, that's nice. Oh, it's our partner! Hey, partner! How about that cup of coffee? Damn fine coffee. 
Right, this is Mr. Willis. He lives right there, next door. Coffee detective? Yes, please. Oh, there's another examine icon. I think I got them all. You can ask him any questions you may have about last night. Right, Mr. Willis. Can you tell me everything that you saw or heard during the night's events? We'll see. I did it off to bed at around 11 p.m. as I usually do after a glass of whiskey. Huh? Helps me sleep, you know? Anyway, somewhere around 12.15, I'd say I was woken up by a loud bang. Ran to my bedroom window. That looks straight down into place. And what did you see? Nothing. The kitchen lights were on, but that's about it. I went to my phone and called Officer Watts here straight away. I would agree with IROC in that that is a really small window of time. Five minutes after calling the police, they get there. How long did it take you to get to the window once you heard the shot? Oh, about a couple seconds, Detective. Not more than five, I'd say. I nearly fell out of bed when I heard the shot, so you might say I was halfway there already. Uh-huh. Did you see anyone at all on the street? No, detective. Everything was exactly the same as always. Uh, you said you heard one gunshot? Yeah. A whiskey usually knocks me out pretty good, so there have been more. I didn't hear them. Alright. Let's move on. Do you live alone? Do you live alone, Mr. Willis? Yes, I do. Never got married. It's a... Uh, ah, long story. One meant to be talked over a couple of whiskeys. <laughs> know what I mean? <laughs> oh my god. This guy. Hmm. Can anyone confirm your whereabouts? Uh, no. I, I was just at home, you see. Am I a suspect? It's a procedure, Mr. W I know Mr. Willis. He's cool. Uh, we are going to have issues with this sheriff. Uh, huh. I'll ignore that for now. I, I'm going to want to get in good with this sheriff, but... Did they have any visitors? Did Chris and I have any visitors, friends, etc.? No. Nope. Not at all, in fact. In all this time, I only maybe saw Jack coming over to fix their car. Now, who is Jack? Ah, people rarely ever visited him because they mostly kept to themselves, see? Never made any friends here. But sometimes folks don't like those kinds either, so I can't really say, you know what, you know what I mean? Uh, no. Please elaborate. You won't find anyone crying over their deaths here. Nobody really knew them. Never, they never got out much. Wow, people are really judgy here. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with us, Mr. Willis? I don't know if this is useful, but... You might have heard about Chris and Diane. They looked pretty happy when they first moved in. More recently, though... Ah, synchronized coffee drinks. I heard Diane crying a couple times, usually late at night. See, the whiskey knocks me out early. Yeah, we've heard. So maybe that's why I never heard all this before, but a couple times, I was up a little later. One night, about a month ago, I heard pretty bad things. There were some loud sounds, like stuff being flung around and such. See? I heard him, someone crying. I think to myself that maybe I should call the police, but then it quiet down all of a sudden. We never received any calls for domestic violence, but people often talk all of stories of this kind. Can you remember when you heard this, Mr. Willis? Well, I was up late night writing an important letter. I think it must have been somewhere between the first to third last month. First to third September, all right? Anything else? Nope, that's all I know about this. Alright. Thanks for your help, Mr. Willis. We'll be in touch if we need anything else. No problem, and, uh, 
Thanks for the coffee. Alright, alright. So, the sheriff. Well, I think that's cleared up a lot of things. It has? Oh, come on, detective. You're supposed to be good at these things, aren't you? Mr. Willis didn't see anything outside the house after the gunshots, and there are no signs of anyone forcing entry either. On top of that, considering how rough things were between the two of them, you heard what Mr. Willis said, right? We don't know the complete picture yet. The amount of information we have now is very little. It's not the complete picture. We need to dig deeper if we want to know the truth, and not just confirm our assumptions. Well, what... What about the door, huh? How was it locked from the inside? Explain that! Oh, Sheriff, you doff protest too much. I checked the door. It locks itself from the inside when you pull it closed. Ooh. Whether you pull it from the outside or push it from the inside. Dun, dun, dun! I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm saying that there's no conclusive evidence yet. What assumptions? It is, you know what, like, that's the thing, I'm like, looking at this, I'm like, yeah, it, it does look pretty open shut. I feel like we're kind of searching for conclusions here. Well, fine then. Dig as deep as you'd like, detective. You won't find anything new here. The hell I won't. I was perfectly capable of handling this case myself, but of course the department had to complicate things. In any case, Sheriff Harris will probably want to wrap this case up before the festival. So don't expect him to wait for more than a week. Alright, we got a week. I have to head to the station now. Officer, ex ex es bleh, escort Detective Stone to his hotel. Will do, sir. Dun, 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 dun. We'll come back in the evening to search the house. Letters, diaries, things of that sort. All right. Thanks, Officer Blunt. Oh, I can't see it. When can we expect the autopsy results? Day after tomorrow, according to the coroner. But I'll confirm and let you know. I'm trying to figure out how to speak bluntly. I'm guessing. I'm guessing there were more than two bullets shot last night. We should take another look at the kitchen to make sure. Three bullets, but... Mm. Mm. We're actually glad I'm here, you know. Although the sheriff and officer once would rather not admit it. Even to themselves. This is like the first murder here in the last hundred years or so. We have no idea how to deal with it. Uh, I mean... It's alright. It's alright, I know what you mean. I just joined the force a month back, for instance. Got a murder already. I'm not sure if I'm ready. It could be worse, Detective Stone. It could have been the high school prom queen dead and wrapped in plastic. <laughs> Very true. I kind of knew to them, you could say. I've never owned anyone that's been murdered before, you know? It's kind of weird. A bit sad. I know as an officer I'm not supposed to feel that way and all. You'll be fine. Give it time. Thanks, Detective. Alright. Let's, yeah, let's find out more. <laughs> what do you know about Chris and Diane? Well, not much. <coughs> it's mostly what Mr. Willis said earlier. Nobody knew them, really. They came in here, kept to themselves. You hear your stories all about them. Everyone thought they were some kind of weirdos. I admit, I kind of agreed with that sentiment, too. I feel bad about that now. It's no reason to make assumptions about people's character. And character can be used as evidence. So I'd really like to help figure out what the real story is, whatever it may be. What's the festival next week about? Yeah. This... Oh, it's an annual thing. We have it every October. There's a fair on the market seat. There's food, rides... We get a lot of tourists from nearby states around that time. It's a good source of revenue for some of our smaller businesses here. That, of course, is less important in the light of recent events. She's like the eager new cop 
No wonder she ran in. Good to hear you say that. Of course, we can't go around trying to wrap up cases based on our assumptions, whatever the situation may be. I mean, these people's lot these are people's lives that were ended. It's our job to figure out what really happened. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, you can count on me during this investigation. There we go. Nice. Thanks. And that dialogue. I'm hoping the local police will let me do the job I've sent I've been sent to do though. Yeah. I don't mean you. Detective, I know what you mean. Honestly speaking, Sheriff Harris is an asshole. She is one She's one of those rookies, yeah. Ugh. I'm serious. He doesn't care about anything except running off running off home and taking it easy. This case probably ruined his plans to relax and enjoy the festival week. I hate people like that. Officer Watts, though? Aw, oh, he's really sweet. I know he comes across as a little obnoxious, but... <clears throat> I'm not in love. I'm not in love. Oh my god! Oh! What did I just do? What the hell was that? Okay, this is getting interesting. Okay. Okay, then... Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> what? My rock is into this! I, 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 I saw her. She was, she was right there! Why- why am I seeing her? Why am I thinking of her? Oh, is this someone from his past? Oh! I like this game! <laughs> After a ghostly woman appears. Okay, let's look at our car. My poor car! Uh, can I use it? That would be dangerous. It sure would! So I guess I should, um... I guess I should talk to my partner, see how she's doing. Shall I talk to the dude? Yeah. His name's Jack. Oh, this is Jack! It's a good thing he was passing by when the crash happened. Okay. Oh, boy. Hey, Jack. Sup, dude? Anytime you see the word sub dude coming from a white guy, you immediately know what his voice is gonna sound like. Immediately. What's, what's the issue with the car? Well, the headlights and the bumper's gone. You need to have them replaced. I'm gonna have to check if I've got replacement parts so I can fix it up. How long will it take you to fix it? Couple days, three maybe, depending on how quickly you can get the parts. Shouldn't take more than four days at most. Okay, so I heard couple, three, and then four. Oh boy, yeah. Hey dude, can you fetch me my big red branch? It should be in a toolbox outside. Yeah, alright, I'll help out. Alright, I'll get it. You're amazing, bud. Thanks. Why are you assuming he's a stoner? That's a stoner's voice. Yeah, I just hear sup dude, I think like 90s, 90s like surf dude kind of thing. Sup dude! Alright. Geez, I hope she's not hurt. Yeah, let's, let's see how Officer Blood's doing. Doesn't Jack need your help? Tell me, talk to me when you're done. Okay, so I'll... Uh, where's the toolbox? What did you say it was? I'm glad I can run. That is a good thing. Aha! Look at that. Jack got us here in that. Oh, that's just like tow truck. Okay, I'll use it. It's locked. <sighs> Jack! Jesus. 
Toolbox is locked, Jack. Oh, that's weird. Why did I lock it? Anyway, the key should be somewhere around the stuff behind your car. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Uh, keys. Alright, got the key. Car, shovel. Huh, wonder what Jack uses them for. Indeed. Is there anything else here? Okay. He could be an Ivy League college student doing a study on surfer vernacular in small towns. Could be. Ah, I'm still. <laughs> see what's in here. I'm gonna take the big red wrench. Must be it. Alright, I got your wrench. There you go. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I love this wrench. Thanks, bud. That red convertible there, is it yours? Yeah, man. That's a 65 Mustang. I love that ride. I got it. He is pretty cheap off a guy who could take care of her any- who couldn't take care of her anymore. Luckily, the car's got something that keeps it running new now. The big red wrench. You know, the red wrench is pretty awesome. But it's nothing if it's not got someone who can make it work. Me. I spent all my free time on her, fixing her up, making sure she runs better than new. <laughs> uh, it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, he's a stoner. And I keep her happy by taking her on long, beautiful drives on the roads outside town. Alright, what's with the tar and shovel, dude? You got a shovel and some tar there. What do you use those for? Er, that dude. I do a bit of construction work on the side sometimes, you know? Fixing up driveways and stuff for some extra cash. Alright. Sanctum, you're investigating Diane's murder, right? And Chris, yes. Do you have any information that can help us? I don't know about information, man. I just know that he did it. What do you mean? Chris, he killed her. Ooh, everything just went, like, silent. There we go. Why do you say this? I, I, everyone can see it coming. Diane, they said she was troubled. Scared of him, even. Someone in this town should have done something. We all knew this could happen. Oh, this was the guy at the... At the... Murder scene. But no one cared enough about them to bother interfering. How do you know all this? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Rumors around town, mostly. Yeah, sure. Okay. Did you know Chris and Diane well? Not really. People here barely did. They were not the kind to come out and make friends with their new neighbors, it looks like. They still felt like outsiders to the rest of us. Alright, what were you doing last night? Uh, wh what was I doing last night? Yes, that's what I asked. I, oh, right. I drove a couple miles from here and drank a few beers while I enjoyed the view. Yeah. At night. Yeah, stars, man. Let me see. Was there anyone with you? Did you meet anyone? Nah, man, there's nothing like the pleasure of your own company sometimes. Alright, well, thanks for your help, Jack. We shall be back if we have any more questions. Of course you will. What do you mean, Jack? Run for your car, man! Come back when it's fixed! You get way too serious. Way too fast, man. Chill out! <laughs> no way, man. I'm a hardened detective. Here we go. Oh. Let's talk to Diane. Apologize. Hey. Hi. Uh, are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine, surprisingly. I'm gonna apologize. That, that was bad. I'm really sorry about the crash. I don't know what... It's all, it's all right. Especially since we're okay. Something else worries me, though. What's that? What happened back there? How did we hit that tree? Uh, I thought I saw something. What did you see? Dun, dun, 
done. What do I say? How how uh, how honest do I want to be with her? Yeah, Fred, why don't you come back to the station with me? You're acting funny. I'll be I'll be straight up. A person. I thought I saw a person. That's kind of creepy. Yeah. But are you okay otherwise? I mean, I don't know if he- I don't know you, so I don't know if this is a regular thing. No offense. No, no, that's okay. I know what you mean. Yeah, I mean, you <sighs> collapsed back there at the crime scene, too, and then this. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've been- I've been a little dizzy all day. That's not worrying at all. Maybe I just need a nap. Seeing this kind of stuff kind of bums me out. Uh... I'm just saying, if there's anything wrong, you could talk to me about it. Don't hesitate. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, 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 says I rock. They will think you're crazy. I didn't say a ghost. I just said a person. Detective! Oh. I'm gonna drive to the next town for a bit. Want me to drop you off on the way? Yeah. Thanks, Jack. It's time to settle in. See where we'll be staying. Here we are, the famous Pineview Main Street. I'm kidding, not much to see here, really. Let's see if we can talk to some of the locals on the way to the hotel. Okay. Alright, this is very busy this time of day, but there should be a few people out here. Father Smith knows a lot about Pineview. It'd be a good idea to talk to him before heading to the hotel. He should be around St. Madeline's Church. Oh, also, here's a map of Pineview so you can get around town by yourself. Ooh, we have a map! Pressing M. Press N to check the current objectives. Oh, fun! Okay, so we're out of the tutorial level. This is cool. Okay. Talk to Father Smith. Okay. 96. How old was I? I was 13 in 1996. This game would have been right up my alley at that time. I think at the time I was playing, like, Police Quest on my dad's work laptop. This road leads to Jack's auto repair shop. Ooh, what's that? Oh, who's that? Come here for breakfast someday. The owner Mark is a pretty great guy. You mean me? Alright. Looks like there are a few people out. So there's Aspen Street? I can't walk back there right now. Let's talk. Hey detective, you're investigating the shootings, right? Yes I am. The whole thing is so tragic. Anyway, do you want some tea, coffee? This is my cafe here. No, that's alright. I Come over here if you want a print. A pint. <laughs> Keep your unhealthy habits to yourself, Alan. Too much coffee's unhealthy, too. Oh, we got a rivalry. Also, if you haven't noticed, he's already smoking a cigarette. Ignore him. He just likes to annoy me. And I let it get to me all the same. Yeah, who's that? That's Alan, owner of the bar next door, and my brother. Oh, it's even worse. Twin brother. Not that you know by the way we live our lives. I don't know how we ended up as polar opposites. I know. I got all the good stuff. Ugh. Anyway. You had questions? Alright, how long have you lived in Pineview? I was born here. My family lived here for many years before that. We left the city when I was about ten. My dad was looking for better work. I returned as soon as I graduated, about nine years back. I prefer the life here. Big cities just aren't for me. Ugh. Sorry, I'm gonna be in a bed soon. Hey, Pandora! Oh, wait! 
Pandora is here. We are solving a mystery of uh, a supposed suicide in a small town. It's very Twin Peaks-esque. And, of course, um, our detective here might may or may not be having some strange hallucinations of some sort. Did Alan also come with you at the same time? No, Alan, he only joined me here five years back to get a fresh start. Maybe he could tell maybe he could tell you more about that. Do you live alone? Do you live by yourself, Mark? No, I'm married, have been for about six years now. Met my wife in my own cafe, actually. Aw, it's a cute story. We were very happy for you, Mark. This is our very eager rookie uh, partner joining us. We're like the big city cop who's come in to solve this uh, who was brought in to solve this suicide. And of course, none of the local cops like that. They just kind of want to wrap it up. Does Alan also live with you? Nobody lives close by. Was he in last night? Yes, I think so. I didn't check in or meet him, though. Uh, Chris and Diane, who are the people who died? Do you see them often? Do you see Chris and Diane often? No, no, no. Barely. A handful of times, maybe. They came into the cafe a few times, but that was in the early days when they just moved in. So Diane was shot in the stomach, and then Chris supposedly shot himself in the head, so it was a murder-suicide. You think you know who did it? We've barely met the town yet. Irock thinks he knows who did it. Or I could say they didn't have eyes for anyone else. To put it bluntly, they looked very much in love. Okay. Can you tell me about them? Is there anything else? Anything that stands out? Well, I kind of identified with Chris in a way. It sounds like he moved here for the peace of mind this place provides and started a small business for himself. Small business? You were trying to get a hotel project off the ground here from what I hear. You had trouble getting the project approved. Maybe smother Father Smith. I really want me to see Father Smith. He's involved in the planning committee. Okay. Uh, any more questions? Where were you last night? Sure, as always, I closed my place at by 8pm. I bought some supplies from the journal store down the street and then went home. I assume the storekeeper will remember that. Yes, Mrs. Brown was in last night at that time. She should be able to confirm what I just said. And Alan, could he confirm this? He didn't come to work yesterday. He took a day off. Ah. Uh, mm, uh. Said he was feeling unwell, so he just stayed at home all day. Looks like he that's passed. Luckily, he looks fine today. Anyway, enough about that. Uh, I went back home after that, changed, and went for a jog as usual. Came back, took a nice long warm bath, and made myself a cup of coffee, and had dinner with my wife. It was all so wonderful. Then read a book for an- oh my gosh, he's telling us his life story. I was probably asleep by 10.30pm, as always. Oh, ha, ha. Anything unusual? Anything out of the ordinary? Hmm. No, I can't say I have. Everything's been pretty much the same as usual. Okay. We'll talk later. Alright, Mark. Let's see, uh, let's see what Alan has to say for himself. Huh. Looks like Alan's locked up and left. How convenient! Talking to investigators has that effect. You come clean. Yeah, uh, there was a... Uh, in my old neighborhood, there was a murder, actually, and uh, in the park next to my apartment building. And I had actually been walking home through the park that night. Like, Four hours before the murder actually happened. But it was like at about 11.30, I had my headphones on, and it, my music was blasting, so even if something had happened, I wouldn't have been able to see it. But oh man, when the police officer came by my door, to, my apartment door, because they were just canvassing, right? They, they do that. They want to get anybody who has any information, if they heard anything. And I just like, poured out so many details to him. <laughs> It was like, and he was just, he had the most, like, impatient look on his face, like, oh my god, here we go, another one. 
And I felt ridiculous after, but it was it was pretty funny when I thought back on it. Uh... Who's that? That's Grandpa, owner of Grandpa's Bakery. Is he your grandfather? Oh no, he isn't. Is his name Grandpa then? I don't really know, actually. Okay then. Alright. Let's talk to Grandpa. Uh, hello, Grandpa? I'm not your Grandpa! And your name is... Grandpa! <laughs> oh no. Uh, Mr. Grandpa, I, I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions. I was wondering if I could ask Mrs. Brown there out on a date. <laughs> well, wondering ain't doing, isn't it? Okay. Just look at her. Oh boy, it makes me feel 40 years younger than she does. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, this town's great. Do you ever plan to grow up, Grandpa? Any more growing up, and I just might die. I like this, Grandpa. And I ain't planning on doing that before I ask you out. Goodness, such immaturity at this age. She likes me. I know she does. Oh my goodness. You're deluded. Woohoo! <laughs> anyway, you had questions, young man? I, I thought I did. <laughs> Seriously. How long have you lived in Pineview? Forever! My family's been here for generations. Apologies again, I'm not doing any and even attempting voices tonight, but I am trying to be regular emotions. Yeah, Gramps, I want to be like him when I'm 80. Yeah, seriously. Guess I'm last in the line now. My shop's been here for generations too, you know, and I think I've taken real good care of it. Oh, and she's taken real good care of me too. Alright, where was he? Where were you last night around 12 a.m.? Where do you think I was? Uh, sleeping? Were you asleep? That's right! What else are you spend an old man to do at that time of night? He's got a point. Can anyone confirm this? No! No one can! I live alone! About Chris and Diane. What can you tell me about Chris and Diane? When I first- when they first moved in, Chris would often come in the evening and buy some things from me. He'd come in daily almost, but pretty cheerful too. And a couple months after that, he just stopped coming. Ooh, why? A few times he came here, I could see something wasn't right. Maybe trouble with this lady, I don't know. He and Diane went to the church maybe a couple times. Oops, sorry. That's it! It was old man Jenkins! His name's Grandpa! Uh, once or twice they came here over after for coffee and donuts. They're quite a couple, I tell you. He was the quiet and nonchalant one. She an exciting, electrifying energy. Classic a case of opposites attracted to each other. What people say is true. I don't know how things went so wrong so fast. But then with these things, you could never say. It was all about four or five months back. After that, I hardly ever saw them out here again. Let's see, any more questions? Anything unusual? Huh, now that you think about it, I actually might have. Yes? Mrs. Brown's been tying her hair in a much tighter bun lately. I wonder what that means. Is she softened it up, trying to hide that fact? Uh, oh, Grandpa, you notice these things. I mean, when I say, when I say, I mean it when I say it, beautiful. I'm a passionate lover. Very passionate. Oh my god, Grandpa. Damn it, Grandpa! <clears throat> Hello. I was trying to talk about the possible murders. Did you notice anything unusual about leading up to that? Oh, 
Oh no, much the same. Can't say I did. Ugh. You live by yourself? <sighs> yes. Yes, I do. Kids left behind you for the big city. Too boring here, they say. It's been many years since the wife died. So I run the shop here by myself, and I live down the street, pretty close by. That's alright. I've got friends here to keep me company. Officer Blunt pays me a visit here every day, for instance. It's always a pleasure to meet you, Grandpa. Also, there's uh, Miss Brown. She makes every day exciting. Oh my goodness. Please, God, give me strength. Oh, look how she flirts. Wow, he's a little delusional, but he's awesome. All right, I think that's all we got for Grandpa for now. All right, Grandpa, we'll talk later. Who you call Grandpa? I'm not your Grandpa! Oh, boy. I'm enjoying this town so far. Uh, let's look at Grandpa's shop. That's one way to name a bakery. He may be kind of creepy at times, but he sure knows how to bake well. I may be old, but I'm not completely deaf, you know. Sorry, Grandpa. I'm not your Grandpa! Okay, okay, we got it. We got it. So this is, uh, Ms. Brown. Take a look at her. That's Ms. Brown. Keep chasing her, you'll catch her. Hmm. Who is it? Oh, Detective, you'll have to excuse me. I'm awfully busy at the moment. New inventory is just coming and I need to take stock. All right, open the second box, Johnny. No problem, we'll talk later. Okay, so she's busy. Overlook! Oh, I rock! There you go, it's the Overlook. That's the Shining, right? Yeah. Oh! Oh, this is- this is- this is nice. This is pretty beautiful. So I'm just gonna take a look at my map for a sec. Where am I headed? This is Overlook. Oh my god. We have an Overlook Hotel, people. Oh my god. So where's the church? Okay, so it's up there. So I guess that's where I can go for now. Ha! <laughs> Let's see, there's- I guess that's the past- the priest? What's that say? Constructed in late 1700s, St. Madeline's Church is named after St. Madeline, patron saint of elderly animals. It's pretty specific. On her feast day of November 17th, it is customary for children to bring their animals to the church to be blessed. St. Madeline is remembered for her love of animals and nature. It is often pictured alongside her favorite cat during her lifetime, Angus. Okay. Let's talk to Father Brown. Father Smith, sorry. I've been watching too many uh, detective shows. Ah, hello, detective. Stone. Detective Stone. First time in Pine View, I assume? Yes, only just arrived. I, I wanted... That is good. That is good. And what do you think of it? Do you like it here? It's, uh, peaceful. It's peaceful. It's peaceful, I'll admit that. It is, isn't it? You must enjoy your time here. The change of pace must feel good, coming from the city. But you must al always want to preserve this peace, too, yes? Leave here without taking anything away from us? There's a way of life here, and I do my best to maintain that. For the good of my people. He did it! He did it! He's the murderer! Um... The ones that are here are... On, sorry, the ones that are here are more than just a merry whip. I see. Anyway, detective. You had questions? I heard Chris is trying to start a hotel here. As you're part of Fine View Planning Committee, can you tell me what that was about exactly? Sure. Chris wanted to open a hotel about four, with about 40 rooms or so. He said he wanted to keep it small in accordance with our bylaws, but even 40 was pushing it. These things always grow out of hand. Once the tourists started coming in, 
They'd see how untouched a place Pineview really is. Demand would increase, and of course Chris would want to pass wouldn't want to pass up an opportunity to cash in on that. No, no, no. It's way too obvious. Priest is too obvious. Regardless, we never got to that point. Chris always kept messing up his papers whenever he came in for approval. He'd either misplace them or mess up on some of the details. There were always delays on the construction site, too. I guess the delays cost him money. It's all going downhill fast. And, well, then this happened. Okay. Can you tell me about Chris and Diane? Do you, do you know them well? Not too well. They came to church a couple of times after they moved into Pineview, but then soon stopped coming at all. Okay, so something happened like two months in that caused them to stop. They withdrew themselves from the rest of the community. I can't say that helped them. Friends can be difficult, can help in difficult times, and it's obvious they were beginning to have really difficult times by the end. If they'd continue to come to church, I could have offered some guidance. Sometimes relationships can entangle you. But unfortunately, it had come to this. Whatever their troubles, it looks like they made each other suffer for it. I'm sure you'll learn most uh, what most of us here already know. In any case, I wish you good luck in your investigation. Hey, where were you? Tell me where you were last night, Father Smith. I was here all right. I finished up some work and I went to bed by 10 p.m., I'd say. That seems convenient, yes? Okay, we'll talk later. We'll talk later. I'm sure we will. Okay, so we have talked to Father Smith. But they were just checking out the town. Yeah, but generally, like, whenever I go to small towns or whenever I stay in small towns for a bit... I, I kind of get into a routine. I kind of get to know the community a bit. I'll find a cafe and I'll eat there for like... Can I go in here? Okay. Nope. Uh, do I keep going? Oh. Let's see. I'm just gonna go back up. Cause how do I get to the hotel? What was the circus regarding the murders? Uh, the, cir the circumstances? Um, so, it was the night before. It happened around midnight. Uh, they, the, the There was a woman who was shot at point-blank range in the stomach, and then a man who supposedly shot himself in the head afterwards. However, uh, the gun that they shot themselves, that was shot, actually had three shots fired from it, not two, so there's a third shot that's unaccounted for. At the very, very beginning of this game, we saw a silhouette of a man in a window shooting himself in the head, but we don't know how true or untrue that is. And it was in their home, yes. Okay, so let's go back down. Can I go talk to her now? Oh, what's that? Overlook. Use. Alright then, the hotel is further down Overlook Street. Check the map. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Mark's Cafe? Sounds good. See you, officer. Take care, detective. Alright, we're going to our hotel. Was she pregnant? As far as we know, no. But the police want this wrapped up really fast. Who's that? I love games. I love games, too. You know Chris, Chris killed her, right? What? How do you know that? I don't know. That's what everyone says happened. Nah, not yet, man. You played that game I gave you? I wonder if these are the developers. It's 3D, man! 3D! Oh, oh yeah, also it's 1996. So, like, I bet the 3D games are, like, so new right now. I think Resident Evil was coming out at that time, right? Okay, what's that? Can't look at that one yet, so let's keep going. Ooh. 
Oh, Tomb Raider, yeah. Oh, so this is the... The hotel. Who is this? Let's talk to her. Oh, hello. I'm Mary Patterson. I run this hotel with my husband. You're Detective Stone, I presume? Yes, I am. Good to meet you. I prepared our best room on the top floor for you. It isn't the biggest establishment, so it isn't too fancy, but I think you'll like it here. You must be tired. There's hot water in your room and dinner's ready. I should hope that there's hot water in the room. The Great Northern? <laughs> Come on, I'll show you the way. Thank you, Mrs. Patterson. Okay. Hotel rooms. They all feel the same, don't they? I don't know. Reminds me of better times. Oh, we're so hardened and grizzled. We need more scotch. Here we go. Okay. Alright, what do we got? That's the way to the bathroom. Shall we use the bathroom? Oh, I don't really need to go there. Uh, yeah, let's use the toilet. Better go before I sleep. I don't want to get up in the middle of the night. It's kind of chilly. Oh, I know that pain. My apartment is so cold right now. He's going to have a dream about a man of short stature who speaks backwards. Yeah. Totally. Uh, how about that? It's a light switch. Ooh. Okay. Drawers. Shall we use the drawers? Ah, I can change outfits? Okay, what's stressed out? I gotta, I gotta see my options here. Okay, this is stressed out. Okay, this is classic. Classic? John. What's John? I don't know what that means, but he's blue now. Casual? Nice. Formal. Very official looking. We got stressed out. We got sleepwear. We should we should keep with sleepwear because we're going to sleep. Okay. <sighs> nice. That's a nice little touch. Alright, let's let's take a look at this great view, huh? Pine view is a beautiful place. Painfully beautiful. Yeah. It's too cold outside, maybe later. Okay. Should I go to sleep now? Uh, not yet. Let me let me just see if there's anything else. Oh, okay, we'll go to sleep then. I don't I don't think there's anything else. <sighs> yeah, let's go to sleep. I really need to get some sleep today. With a cigarette. What the hell happened back there today? After all these days. Oh yeah, we almost had a car accident. God damn. No mark. There's no peace of mind here. Silence. It only lets your thoughts speak louder. Oh boy. Oh. Oh no. I rock, you were right. There's red walls. I'm already distressed. Okay. Okay. I don't. Am I dreaming? Yes. Told you, he says. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh, I do not want to go to the end of this corridor. Hello. This is a horrible dream. Yeah, it is. Oh. All right. I guess we're falling. Wee! Oh God, no. No, I don't want to see this. I don't want to remember. I need to get out. Why am I here? I need to wake up! I need to wake up! Wake up! Eee! Oh, wake up, wake up, wake up! Wake up, wake up! Wake up, wake up! Wake up! Oh. What the? Am I awake? I, I can't move. Oh. Is he sleep paralysis -ing? Anyone here ever get sleep paralysis? It's terrifying. It's horrifying. What's going on? 
Okay, um, I'll try to move my arms. Get. Try to move my head. Nope. Try to move my legs. Ah. This is hopeless, I can't. Wait, what's that? Oh shit, 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 what, what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, Abigail, is that you? Michael, you did this. Why? How could you? I don't know! I don't know! I. How could you live after doing something like that? They say riches are riding you. This is pretty much a sleep paralysis thing. You have no idea how hard it is going on without you. Then why go on? That's the point. What? The point? I don't know. What? What is that? What is? What is that? For your happiness, do you feel you deserve that anymore? Or for this case, do you think anyone even cares about it? For who, Michael? Protect yourself from thoughts about me. You need to hide me from yourself so that you can live. Is it worth it? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not sure. I miss you, Michael. Okay. Gasp. Jeez. Well, that's unsettling. Yeah, horrible night. Officer Blunt said I was to meet her at Mark's Cafe. Better get going. Alright, I should get changed. Oh, crap. Hold on. Anyone else can hear me? Not sure. Hello again! Sorry. That was a minor setback. So let's get back to it. I'm just gonna text here. <sighs> Can't be on too much longer anyway. There I am. Okay. Huh, that was weird. OBS just suddenly... Yeah, my broadcast stopped. Yeah, I got it. No, OBS let me know. Um, the snowstorm has been really messing with the internet, so I'm actually amazed that that we actually got to where we were. Okay, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's see, let's grab our outfits. Uh, stressed out or formal or casual? Let's go casual. Yeah, we're casual here. Should I leave? Yeah, let's leave. Hello, detective. How are you feeling today? Um, I'm alright. So let's start the day off here. A cup of coffee before heading out onto the scene. You said we should search this house for letters and diaries, right? Alright then, let's, uh, let's discuss the case. What have we got so far? Well, not much more than we had yesterday. We know that only recently they have planned to go for a vacation together. Ah, did something change that? I need more coffee. I think I need more coffee. Would you like some? No, I'm good. Alright. Who's that? He's just lying on the table staring at his coffee. I wonder what's wrong with him. Dare I ask him? I don't know. 
Uh, sir, are you okay? Obviously. You gonna drink your tea? I'm waiting for it to reach just the right temperature. I'll bring it then with my complete attention. I like staring at the cup and watching the steam rise while I wait. Uh, it's beautiful, isn't it? A cup of tea holds so many answers to life, to happiness. Alright. Uh, does coffee hold any answers? Obviously. It's just a cup of hot beverage, isn't it? That's not the point. Well, then how does a cup of coffee hold answers to those questions? It's simple. If you would enjoy a cup of tea or coffee, as it were, the best possible experience in the universe, then you know happiness. If you can't, you won't truly appreciate the grandest e of experiences either. Don't you agree? Well, I think I kind of get it. I think I kind of get it. Your words are rallying in my head at the very least. Well, then you've got it. Thank you, tea man. Is that Mark? Hello, detective. What do you need? Cup of coffee, Mark. Give me some coffee. Cup of Joe. Yeah. Any progress with the case? Do you know who might have done it? I can't discuss that with you, Mark. Yeah, of course I, I understand. Well, I hope you enjoy your time in Pineview, or despite the circumstances. That's really not a priority, but thanks. Look at him go. Excuse? Get the co got the coffee. Alright, we got our coffee. Let's go. Can I go? Can I talk? No? Here we go. Let's visit the crime scene. Ready to go? Yes. Right, lead the way. Really, I, I get the sense that this is a conservative town, Iraq. Oh, Alan's back. Let's talk to him and see if he can tell us anything. Alan! Hey! What's up, detective? Hi, Alan. Officer Blunt. Tell me about yourself. Tell me about yourself, Alan. How long have you been here? That sort of thing. Sure, if you talk to my brother Mark Ruddy, you probably know I moved here five years ago. I needed a change in my life, and so I thought I'd give this place another shot. Turns out it's just as bloody boring as it was when I was ten. I feel like I need, like, a British accent, but I'm not gonna offend anybody with that. But hey, got me out of a place I'd begun to hate even more, so it's an improvement, you know? And you get used to the place eventually. Mark did me a big favor, gave me half his cake half of his cafe to start a business in. Guess he's not too pleased with the business I chose to run, though. He's a good guy. Where were you on the 6th that night? I'm sure Mark must have told you already I was at home. I wasn't feeling well, so I stayed home instead. Is there anyone that can confirm this? Apart from Mark? I don't know. Since I don't didn't leave home, no one saw me, you know? Was it your pub open that night, Alan? I hope it was. I'd left Lenny in charge. He helps me out sometimes. Lenny. Can we talk to him? Afraid not. He left town later that night. Who's that dude? Should be back soon, though. Let's know when he's back. We'd like to ask him some questions. Will do, officer. Did you know Chris and Diane? Nope, not at all. Kind of person who minds his own business. I don't go interfering with people's affairs in their lives. Uh, what do you mean? I just took a waste of my time getting to know people if there's no need for it. To me, it looked like they preferred to mind their own business as well. So no, I didn't know them at all. Hey, wait, where's dude going? Who are you? Who are you? Come back. Whoops. Come back. Okay. Where'd he go? Hey, dude! Hey, dude! I'm getting old. Now, what did I... Fine. Let's talk to Ladyface. Oh, ma'am. Ah, who is it? Ah, you're that detective, aren't you? Come to ask about the murders. 
Something troubles you, boy. What is it? Come back, come back and respect my authority! Yes. <laughs> what do you mean? I know a troubled soul when I see one, detective. But I understand you don't have time for such questions. That is good. Neither do I. I like her, too. Now, what is it? How long have you lived here? I was born here. I barely stepped outside behind you all my life. I started this shop when I was about 25. I had to support myself once I lost my husband. Do you live alone or do you have family here with you? Johnny's the only family I've got. He's my grandson. Lost my husband in the war. I was about 25. Yes, I, I know you mentioned that already. You must have seen Johnny, right? He's always running around taking photos with his camera. His parents le left him in a tough situation by making some stupid decisions in their lives, so I take care of him now. He's a good boy, so he spends a lot of time helping his grandma and around the shop. I'm getting older now, too. Willpower and mental strength can only get you so far, you know. Time catches up with you eventually. Not that I lack any mental strength. I have single-handedly taken care of a lot here. I'm sure you have. You really have, Mrs. Brown. I really look up to you. You're doing quite too well for yourself, too, young lady. Right. Where were you on the night of the shootings? I went to bed around 9, 9 p.m. Johnny could probably confirm that he was home too. Can you tell me about Chris and Diane? Ah, they were doomed from the start. Why do you say that? I told you. Oh, goodness, I know a troubled soul when I see one. And those two, I've seen it so many times over the years, one can always tell. Others will tell you they were very much in love, but something wasn't right. I always knew that. And then when things really didn't start going well, I mean, everyone heard about it. Alright, thanks for the talk. And I think, should we check in on Grandpa? Maybe we should check in on Grandpa. How you doing, Grandpa? Oh, no, we can't talk to him. Alright. So I think this is where we go to get to the house. Let's go. Who's that? A murder in this town. Oh, they're all shaken up by it. Always happens. Anything here? Back at the house. So here is the scene of the crime. Alright. What are we looking for? Anything that tells us about Chris and Diane. Nobody in this town seems to know much about them. Maybe the room can tell us more. On a detective. Alright. There's a diary here. Empty! Who keeps an empty diary? A bunch of travel magazines, looks like they had a subscription. A book on journalism. So maybe they weren't a couple, maybe they were actually researching something. A couple of fiction books. What's this? The Dreamer's Guide to the World. It's like a self-improvement book about travel. Interesting. This handwritten note on the first page. To Diane, never give up on your dreams. Love, Chris. 10th of January, 1996, so a few months ago. Must have been Diane's bedside. Okay. Um, let's search in here. Moisturizing body butter, makeup items. Okay. Oh, fun, we got a reflection! That's unusual. Check uh, his side. It's locked. He could be here somewhere. It's a photo of Chris, Diane, and some guy. You recognize the third guy, Officer Blunt? I don't think I've ever seen him. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't check this out too during the day of the crime. Must be from outside of town. Hmm. Trash can. Always something in a trash can. 
financial calculations, looks like they were planning for something big. Or at least one of them was. The trash can. Wow, you're really good at this. Yeah. Sorry, I can't help it sometimes. Look. Do it yourself, journalism, and travel books, and a couple of novels. Someone really was into going on a trip. A globe, a blue box, nothing of interest here. Ooh, those are some nice tapes. Uh, there was... How about the bulletin board? Nope. Here we go. Let's see what we have here. A list of locations. Madagascar, Antarctica, Ukraine? Four question mark, five question mark. And below the list is in different handwriting. It says, half the world away. It's underlined twice. There's a shopping list. Phone numbers... Pictures of animals, the ocean. Maybe your pictures of Madagascar? Possible. Another list, woodworking projects to do. Bookcase for living room, custom chair for Diane. So that's Chris. Yeah, financial calculations could be done on the trip. Bookcase for bedroom, this has been stuck through. Some front lawn project. I guess, I'm guessing Chris was into woodworking. Oh, what's this? Talk about issues. Convey patiently. Two, no sacrifices. Three, analyzing everything equals annoying. Code, it's happening. Shut up. Give space. Oh, so if he hears it's happening, shut up. Give space. Which one of them do you think wrote these? Um... Well, I couldn't read the second one, because apparently it flew by. Yeah, I got a swim suit, too. Maybe Chris? Chris, looks like he was the organized type, into making lists and everything. The word bringing one's definitely his, and the handwriting is the same. Yeah, makes sense. And with that, I think I'm actually also going to call it a night. I have um, I have an early morning tomorrow, so time to get some sleep. But I am intrigued. I'm interested to see where this game will go. So I'll probably pick it, pick it up again, if not later this week, then early next week. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. This has been rain swept, so if you want to check it on your own, feel free to. It's It's a fairly good, decent price on Steam. And I've been enjoying it so far. So thanks again. Uh, bye bye.